But uh, we're glad that you're here, and we're glad for a good day today uh, for the Lord Jesus. Uh, today's, of course, if you wonder what's going on with the all-male choir and, and the men's group, I thought the men's group did a great job, and, and the men's choir did a great job. But uh, uh, we're, we sort of moved it from our traditional time, but we are uh, recognizing Baptist Men's Day today. And uh, uh, I, I really am not preaching a quote-unquote uh, men's uh, message uh, although there's going to be an element of it to it, but it really applies to all of us. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed at the insanity that we're living in the midst of today. You know, uh, listen, I realize, I, I remember even as a kid, there were, uh, and I'm going to make up some names here, so uh, hopefully I don't hit anybody that you know by making up some names. But, uh, you know, we all knew that there were some folks that were just a little bit peculiar or weird. Uh, almost every family had a, uh, you know, an Uncle Herman that the kids just were kept away from <laughs> for one reason or another. Okay, uh, I'm not trying to be ugly, but you know, uh, uh, th there was not seemingly the confusion about are you a man or are you a woman? Folks had that figured out. Okay, uh, it, it was pretty clear, I mean, uh, on the birth certificate, and it was pretty clear on everything else. Okay, yeah, there were some strange stuff going on, but nowadays uh, it's openly flaunted and celebrated. Uh, I got to doing a little bit of uh, Googling on the topic, and I ran across a new uh, phrase, at least to me. Uh, maybe you've heard of it before, but uh, th this is a new phrase, gender fluid. Okay. You say, what does that mean? Well, you just sort of go with the flow. You know, you can, you can feel this way today and that way tomorrow and this way. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, that, that, that's just sick. I mean, that's contrary to God's plan and God's design. So today, I want to share with you a message that uh, I entitled, True Identity Security. Okay? True identity security. Uh, our text is in Genesis chapter 1, and very familiar passage of Scripture. Uh, but Genesis chapter 1, beginning with verse number 26. Let's read together, stand together, excuse me, as we, as we read the Word of God. And uh, we'll read through verse number 31, and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. The Bible says, And God said, let us make man in our image. Now when he said us, let me remind you again, he was not having a conference with the angels and saying, hey, let's get, let's get together and make a man like us. I believe this is a meeting of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, saying, let us make man in our image. Okay? After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for your love and your grace, and thank you so much that we have your word. Lord, in a world that seemingly acts as if there are no absolutes, there is no ultimate truth, I'm glad that we can turn to your word and your word is truth. Your word does not change. Heaven and earth may pass away, but your word does not. 
And I pray, dear God, that we would just look to your word today and see a truth that will help all of us. And Lord, may we draw closer to you as a result. Find our true identity in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, if there's anyone here today that needs to know you as Savior, we pray for, Lord, them to meet you today. And may you change their life. Bless now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Right, I'm getting started a little bit later than normal, so just uh, stick with me here. I'll try to let you out by two. And um, uh, <laughs> okay, it, it helps if you laugh at that, or otherwise it might become reality. But uh, uh, listen, I, I want everybody to understand something. I'm not trying to be cruel or unkind to anybody. Okay? Probably every one of us knows someone that is uh, part of a lifestyle that uh, goes contrary to what the Word of God has to say. We love them for Jesus' sake. The only thing that's going to uh, uh, help get them on the right track is a relationship, a genuine relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, I don't care what your sin is. I don't care what your proclivity is. The fact of the matter is, the power of God can help you change your path and change your life. Amen? And so, I just want to give us something today that will help us. You know, uh, everybody, uh, not everybody, but many in the world today, uh, want us to reject this whole concept of biological identity. And this is a real passionate desire. You know, I, let, let me just say this. I believe one of the things that is killing us as a society and killing us as a nation is the fact that our young guys that are being raised up, whether it be in the home or whether it be in the schools or whether it be from their peers or whether it be what you see on the television, we are literally ripping the masculinity out of boys... And we're honestly doing a pretty good number against the femininity of girls. Men, we've got a duty. Teach your boys to be men. Ladies, you've got a duty. Teach your little girls to be ladies. Not just females. Ladies. He said, but preacher, I know somebody that's in a different lifestyle and they are wonderful and I love them. And you know what? I understand. But you know what? The grace of God can change all things. Amen? Amen. And so uh, we pray for them. We love them. We try to guide them. But it's going to be the power of God that's going to change them because uh, one thing I've learned, just us beating on, uh, on top of the head about an issue doesn't always do the job. we just got to keep on loving and keep on praying and keep on witnessing and keep on living the life in front of them. But we're living in a strange time. I mean, uh, like I said, there's this term now, gender fluid. Uh, you know, is it really important for us to determine God's purpose in our existence and live out fully God's design. I believe it is. Uh, I do believe that God provides identity security if we'll fully trust Him. Now, let's take a look at our text here, first of all, uh, very carefully. Number one, go back to verse number 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. We're made in the image of God. What that means is we are triune just like God is. We have a body, we have a soul, and mankind was made with a spirit. Now very frankly, because of sin, we are born spiritually dead. And the only thing that will bring us spiritual life is Jesus. Okay? But the idea here is we are made in the image of God. Okay? We are made as eternal beings. That's another area where we're like God. Listen, your body may one day die, but mark it down, you do not cease to exist just because your body dies. You're going to spend eternity somewhere. You're going to spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you going to be, spend eternity in hell separated from the Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, we are made as eternal beings. 
Jesus. And I think that's important to remember. God wants us, uh, desires for us to have fellowship with Him for eternity. Not only that, verse number 27, what does it say there? So God created man in His own image. In the image of God created He Him. Male and female created He them. Now, as I was Googling last night, and uh, not last night, but uh, as I was preparing, I I saw this thing about gender fluid, and then as I looked down at some of the other explanations, uh, they said, well, there are uh, three genders. Then another one said, no, there are four genders. And then another one said, no, actually, there are at least 52. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Somebody said one every week. I mean, just whatever suits your fancy. <laughs> uh, mark it down, this preacher, I am what I am, and I'm not going to be uh, bouncing around. Amen? Okay? Uh, you're not going to come on Monday and see Thomas, and on, on Tuesday see Thomasina. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> okay? But the idea here is God made them male and female. God never designed us to be gender fluid. You know, the fact of the matter is I believe we need to claim what we are and relish our natural uh, purpose uh, for our lives. Psalm 139. Let me, let me share uh, just a few verses out of Psalm 139. Beginning with verse number 13. Uh, here the psalmist wrote and he says, For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance was fashioned, when as yet some there was uh, none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! He says, listen, my substance was not hid from thee. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Listen, uh, Whenever you were born, God did not look down from heaven and say, Boy, what a mess I made there. I mentioned this morning during prayer time that we have a little girl that we visited. That's a special needs child. I'm going to say something that you might not agree with, but I'm going to stand by it. God did not make a mistake with her either. I'm going to tell you something, that is a sweet youngin. Uh, I wish some of us could love as quickly and as openly as one like her could. Amen. Amen. I mean, listen, whoever you are, however you were born, God had a design for you the way He made you. Rather than us griping about the way God made us, we ought to be saying, okay, God, here I am. Now, what are you going to do with me and help me to have enough sense to follow you? I mean, that, that is really where we need to be on this topic. And so that's important to see. So, so claim what we are. Uh, be, I mean, just possess it and, and just say, I'm going to relish this purpose that God has put in my life. And I believe that God has a divine purpose for your life. You read through verse number 28 to 31. They were to rule over the creation. They were to be fruitful and multiply. I mean, they were to have dominion. I mean, and, 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 and there were so many things that were that was all part of the way that God made them. But I also love this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9 and 10, we find the Apostle Paul, and, and he says something in here that I think is so important. He says in verse 9, he says, For I am the least of the apostles, that I'm not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. I love verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. I love that phrase, by the grace of God I am what I am. We would save a whole lot of time if we'd quit griping that we're not like so and so, and just say, listen, by the grace of God I am what I am, and I may not be able to be that person, but I can be the best that God enables me to be of who I am. 
By the grace of God, I am who I am. That's crucial. That's crucial. We need to keep that in mind and understand that. But now we need to look at this. An unfulfilled life is one that, that, that's really never sought by faith God's purpose. If you never seek God's purpose, you're never going to be fulfilled. A fulfilled life sees the hand of God guiding each step of the way. But then let's look at this. Let, let's get a little bit more current in this thing. There are a lot of attacks on our identity. You know, in the world we're living in today, if you take a stand as an unashamed, Bible-believing, child of God, Christian, you're going to be under the attack by the world. You know what? I've had people actually sort of hint this way to me before. We don't mind you believing whatever you want to believe, but just stay quiet about it. You know one thing I've learned about chihuahuas? They can't deny what they are. Went over to see Dyson. You need it one time, and I wanted to take that chihuahua and flush him. Uh, anyhow, I didn't thank the Lord. I mean, they just can't deny. It. That's what they are. Listen, instead of us trying to hide what we are, man, if we're a born again Bible believing child of God, hey, stand up for who you are and say, "Thank God, I am what I am by the grace of God." Amen. Amen. I mean, don't get caught up in this thing. Well, you know, just uh, keep it quiet. You know, uh, uh, I mean, uh, we need to understand. And when we get into some of these bizarre realms that we're working in today, let me give you a couple of things real quick. Our bodies end up getting dishonored when our hearts get darkened. Let me give you some scripture. Romans chapter 1, verse 20 says this, For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, but not being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Listen, I don't know about you, uh, but, but watching what's been going on here in recent days up in Washington, D.C., I am convinced those folks up there uh, have have a foolish heart that is darkened. I mean, they're nuts. Keep on going. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Huh. Again, Washington, D.C., good example. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. You know what kills me is we're living in a world that perversion now is wanting to be exalted as normal and uh, unless you are just some kind of a Neanderthal, you'll just go ahead and agree with them. Well, if that's the case, mark me down as a Neanderthal. I still believe marriage is between a man and a woman. I, I got amazed. I'm not going to name him and I'm not going to give any initials either. Thank you very much. <laughs> But one of the candidates uh, already saying that, you know, uh, if, if he makes it, then uh, his spouse is going to be called the first gentleman. Mm. Truth of the matter is, we don't know what the future holds, but you know what? We can't control what everybody else does, but bless God, we can keep our ourselves on the right track. Amen? Amen. I mean, what happens? Well, whenever your, your uh, uh, heart gets darkened, our bodies get dishonored. And anytime we reject God's truth, then we're turned over to vile affections. 
Romans chapter 1 and verse number 26 says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Listen. You say, preacher, I, I just don't know if you ought to read verses like that uh, in church. Well, you know what? Last time I checked, they're still in the Bible, and the Bible is a good place for church. Amen. Amen. I know it's not popular. I know that if I lived in certain cities, I could probably have people getting mad and getting up and storming out. By the way, I preached like this, things like this before, and literally had people get up and walk out angry. It's okay. Doesn't change truth. Truth is truth. I know this is uncomfortable. But listen, whenever we reject truth, vile affections come in. You know, here's the fact. We are designed by God to be passionate. Now, I, that, that covers a broad spectrum. I'm not just talking about in your physical attractions. You know, I, I'll be honest. Whenever I, I'm uh, interested in being passionate, uh, Sandy Van is going to be the object of that when it comes to, you know, a physical attraction. It's not going to be Bruce Smith. Okay. <laughs> We're both thankful. Okay. But go beyond that. Go beyond that. God has designed us to be passionate. I mean, whether it's, it, it's a physical attraction or whether it's just the things that really we, we, we reach out to and we attain or we, we aspire to attain and, and, and is a, a driving force in our life. Everybody has got something that they are passionate about. But listen, those passions need to be under the control of God and the Holy Spirit or they will turn vile. We need to remember that. There are forces that will try to make us insecure. Let me give you this real quick. The world will always stand ready to highlight our failure. Isn't it amazing? You mess up, you got plenty of folks around that will always remind you about how you messed up. Bless their heart. Funny thing is, they want to highlight your mistakes, but they don't want anybody to highlight their mistakes. Okay? The world will always do that. Satan will try to bind us and define us by our sin. You know what? In my lifetime, Lord knows, there's, there, there's been a number of things that I struggled with uh, at different points in my life. I look back to... My each years and oh my soul there were times when my I was just uh, in spiritual turmoil at times and you know what the old devil will still come back and try to whisper in my ear and say that's who you are and I can say no by the grace of God that's who I was but it's under the blood it's under the blood God has forgiven Satan will try to bind us and define us by our sin. And our flesh will even doubt what's even possible in Christ. I love the story when uh, the man that had the child uh, that was possessed brought him to the disciples and they couldn't heal him and finally went to Jesus. And notice what it says here, Mark chapter 9 verse 23. It says, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. You ever been there? Well, I have. I believe, but help my unbelief. All right? Let's wrap it up here with this thought. How do we attain true identity security? How do, how do we get it? How, how do we really attain true identity security? Now, we need to understand something. Society will always try to pervert us. They want us to be like them. You know why they want us to be like them? 
When we are like them, it makes them feel less self-conscious about the way they are. They're trying to recruit us so that we <laughs> they feel better about themselves. You know, they might even use this line. Well, everybody's doing it. Well, now, first of all, everybody ain't doing it. That's bad grammar, but I want you to get it. Because I ain't doing it. And I think some of y'all ain't doing it. You say, well, what's it? It's what's ever the popular concept of the moment. Yeah. I still remember when it was a common thing for people to say, try it, you'll like it. Well, there are some things God says don't try, and I'm better off if I just stay away from it. Amen? Amen. You know, truth of the matter is, uh, you know, somebody say, well, what are you going to do if they ever legalize marijuana in, uh, in Georgia? I'm going to keep on doing what I've already been doing. I ain't smoking the stuff. I'm not cooking it in brownies. I'm not going to do any of it. say, so how do you know so much about that? I read, but I ain't doing it. You know why? I don't find my identity there. I don't. You say, well, everybody. No, everybody's not doing it. Whatever it is, society will try to push us that way. Sin will always try to define us. Let me, let me get you to understand something. Without Christ, sin will enslave us. If we don't allow the Lord to have rulership in, in our life on a day-by-day -day basis, mark it down, sin will enslave you. So I said, well, I'm doing this and I know I need to quit, but I can't. She took my point. They're actually telling the truth. I can't. I can't. But with Christ, you can. With Christ, you can. Sin will try to enslave us. But in Christ, sin's power is broken. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And I'm glad that's in the Bible. Old things are, man, I'm not who I used to be. I, I won't bore you with the whole story, but when I was in high school, the Lord was working in my life. I really knew I needed to live for God, but man, I run around with a rough, rough crowd at Hillsborough High School in Tampa, Florida. And I'd have the best of intentions to live right and be, you know, act like a Christian at school. And as soon as I got with my old cronies, boy, the wheels fell off the bus. And then my family just up and moved unexpectedly. And I got moved into a new school district. And the only kids I knew were the ones I'd been going to church with at Providence Baptist Church. I look back and say, boy, blessed be God. God did something for me there that I could have never done in my own power. He got me out of one environment and put me in a new one. And therefore, I was able to submit my life to God. And as a result, I can look back and say, listen, old things are passed away and all things are become new. That's true when we trust Christ as our Savior. But guess what? He wants us to be growing in Him day by day by day. And listen, even if you are already a believer, there may be some things in your life that God is saying to you, hey, that's not your identity. Put it behind you and let me lead you into a better direction. You know, I love this passage. I'm going to do this in closing. But you know, I love this. When it th think about true identity security. Who are you? I can say this. My name is Tom Van. My father is Tom Van Sr. My mother was born Jesse May Daniels. My granddaddy, Charles Basil Van. My grandmother, Verdi 
May Van. My other grandfather, Jesse Calhoun Daniels. I always thought it would have been great to name one of our kids after Sandy's dad and my granddaddy. He would have been Jesse James. Uh, <laughs> Sandy didn't go along with it. <laughs> Jesse Calhoun Daniels. My grandmother, I just found out recently what her name, middle name was, and I can't remember now what it was. Uh, she never would tell us, but uh, she was Jenny, and she always said, Mozella Daniels. Found out that's not correct. That's who I am biologically. But guess what? Who I am is I'm in Christ. That's who I am. I'm not who I was. I'm not who I could have been. I'm who I am because I'm in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 6 and 7 it says to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. Did you catch that? Accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Hey, who are you? If you're a child of God you are accepted in the beloved. Amen. You say, well, you know, I've got a rough past. Hey, are you in Christ? You are accepted in the Beloved. Well, i got some struggles with some things in my life. Hey, if you know Christ, you're accepted in the Beloved. That's your identity. And if you're here today and you've never really trusted Christ, let me offer to you a brand new identity. You also can be accepted in the Beloved. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Still works. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heads bowed. Eyes closed. God's got a purpose for us. There might be a lot of confusion. There might be a lot of perversion about our identity. But uh, God made you the way you are for a purpose. Let's realize our identity is the fact, in the fact that we are accepted in the Beloved. Make sure you're in Christ by faith. And whenever you truly know Him, He'll make it possible for us to seize that God-given identity and that God-given destiny. Heavenly Father, bless this invitation. May your will be done in every heart and life. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name.